I'm calling this meeting to order at 7.02. Let's get started. Uh, team, please join me with our Pledge of Allegiance. Alrighty, good evening everyone. It is beautiful to see all these wonderful, youthful faces. Uh, Miss Alfaro over here was saying, oh, to be young again. <laughs> so thank you for bringing that youthful spirit into this room. The first item on the agenda is, um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting on March 16th, March 20th, and public hearing on March 23rd? So moved. Awesome. Do we have any members of the community that would like to speak during public comment? Raise your hand already. Please join us up in the front. Oh. Please state your name, your address, and you have four minutes to speak. Oh, before you begin, I'm sorry. If if you'd like translation services, we have a translator, if you can wave your hand. Um, we have headsets up in the front. Si ustedes, si hay alguien en la comunidad que quiere tradu traducción, tenemos una persona aquí, una, perdóname, una persona que va a traducir para nosotros hoy en esta reunión. Aquí están los headsets aquí al frente. Alrighty, go ahead, Jose. Four minutes. Okay. Good afternoon, school committee. My name is Josue Castellon, and I'm a student at Chelsea High School. And I'm here to thank you for taking some of our words into consideration by agreeing that the security guards need to undergo some type of training in order to be qualified. However, I still think the lack of guidance counselors is the main issue in our school. While I appreciate the investment in counselors at the ele elementary school level, I think we could do more to support the, high, the middle and high school students. I understand that money's tight, and that's why you couldn't hire more counselors. But all I ask is that next time you get funding, you prioritize hiring more guidance counselors at the middle and high school level. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Anyone else? All righty. Team, is there someone there that would like to speak? No, that's it. Okay. Ready, moving right along. For today's meeting, we don't have any presentations, and I will turn it over to our superintendent, Dr. Beta, to share a report of our schools. Great. So I do have a couple recognitions. And the first one, I did want to recognize a couple of our wonderful teachers at the Wright Middle School today and a student. And so Several weeks ago on Pi Day, so 3.14, <laughs> on 314, we received a wonderful email from a teacher who always brings me joy. And, 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 and Chuck, if you can stand and, or just wave Chuck Coughlin. Um, he's an amazing teacher at the right. He emailed me to, uh, to say, happy, uh, say uh, wondering if you had received the pies that you sent up. So he, he got pies donated for the entire Williams Complex building on Pie Day for every student. Wow. And there was another a student that, uh, Sarah, Sarah, is Sarah here? Where's Sarah? Mm -hmm. She's not here? Okay, so Sarah sort is. She's in Mr. Thomas Katz's class. Coats. Yeah, I really should wear my glasses, but I'm being vain right now. Um, so Ms. Mr. Chuck emailed me and said, uh, I really want to shout out Sada, who's in Tom's class, because Tom does an amazing job with the kids. And they have leftover pies, and Tom she, she told Tom, Ms. Tom, I want to send these pies over to people who need it. And every, when you get these emails, you, you don't get them every day. 
and I'm and then I got the pies and I already knew who they were from <laughs> and I was like this is from 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 Chuck so Chuck I just want to say thank you to you every all the time always thinking about the kids and one way always you always have the kids in mind and then Tom I just want to thank you for working with our students and and I know that you work very hard <laughs> and, and um, your colleague wanted to acknowledge that and so I thought I would acknowledge both of you and, Sa and Sada. So I have a, uh, some certificates for you. So this one is Chelsea Public Schools <laughs> Excellence Award Thomas for his commitment to giving back to Chelsea Public Schools community and for teaching his students. And then the other one is for Chuck We'll, we'll, we'll give this to you. And then for Chuck, for your commitment to giving back to the Chelsea Public Schools and for highlighting Pi Day in Chelsea Public Schools. So we, we can all come down and take a photo with our amazing teachers. And as I said, they couldn't do what they do without their amazing administrators, Michelle, Michelle Martinello and Adam Wildey. So um, they're both at the Williams Complex, and we're fortunate to have such amazing administrators. And so the second thing I'd like to highlight is, um, I, I'm going out of order here, one more. Today we had it, uh, educators of color, um, community building event at the Chelsea Station led by Dr. Erin Jennings. And it was just amazing to come together as a community. And um, we got so many thank yous from our teachers and it was just an amazing event. So um, we had a lot of educators of color who were um, just very grateful for the, the time. So that was today and um, just really sweet time. And so the last thing, and why we have our amazing cheerleader, Chelsea High School cheerleaders here, um, on Sunday, <laughs> and thank you, our girl, our cheerleaders have cheered on every sport all year long, and nobody cheers them on. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we are cheering you yes. on, go girl. <laughs> Thank you for cheering everybody on all year long. And I know, and because I was a cheerleader, and so um, this weekend, our cheerleaders held a showcase, and it was on a Sunday, and there was so many people that came out. Your, I, I missed your performance, but I heard it was a really amazing performance, and I just wanted to, um, recognize, well, it, leadership starts at the top, and I just wanted to recognize your coach, um, Janelle Ariola, because you can, 
because she has a vision for this program and has, is, is building it. And this was our first cheerleader, cheerleader showcase, at least since I've been here. And I was blown away. And you do this with your heart and your soul and you love our, our lady, our cheerleaders. And I just wanted to say thank you for all that you do to make our cheerleaders feel like they belong and that they have a family with when they come to Chelsea High School. And uh, so I just wanted to give you a little certificate and say thank you. So, <laughs> so another Chelsea Public Schools Excellence Award to Janelle Ariola for her commitment and dedication to her cheerleading team during their first showcase for Chelsea High School. We thank you for the energy and care you provide your team. So. Come on up here, Janelle. Yeah. Yes, and everybody can come take another photo. And with, with the cheerleaders? because I, to have that kind of uh, team effort, that is the kind of trust and team building abilities that we need to see throughout all of Chelsea High School. Yeah. Just to give you guys a heads up, that mm. is beautiful. <laughs> and uh, Janelle, I, I, just, I know you're a Chelsea High School alumni as well, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And then one more announcement. Um, this past week, I had the opportunity to go to the State House with two of our students. And one of our students, Sarah E, is a cheerleader, and she's with us. And she went, we went door knocking on legislators' doors about advocating for the early college bill. And we met with our Senator Sal Domenico. And so I just want to say thank you for accompanying me. Um, it was a real special treat to take uh, just two of our students with me to the state, the state legislator. So thank you guys. Woo! And that is all I have for my report. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Beta. Ladies, you rock. Thank you so much. Um, and it's, it's your turn to feel the positive vibes and all the love. So appreciate you all. And Janelli, you go, girl. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Um, next up, we have our student representative update. So I'll turn it over to you. Hi. Um, good evening. Thank you once again for the opportunity to be one of the voices of the school. 
Um, I would love to highlight the educational seminar about the use of the N-word. I'm extremely thankful for Dr. Jennings, who brought Dr. Pebble to educate the staff and the few students who showed out. Um, Latin Students Unite and Black Students Unite would love to have Dr. Pebble back during school hours to educate the rest of the students. Also, shout out to BSU and LSU for the joint meeting we had. And thank you, um, senior cheerleaders, for all the effort you put in. Um, and shout out to us, the um, seniors. Um, graduation is getting closer, and cap and gown sizing happened this week, so it's becoming real. Um, um, on the other hand, though, um, we're asking for more trained security guards to monitor the rest of the restrooms. Today's incident, um, where um, my sister got verbally harassed by a group of girls in the restroom, um, one of the bathrooms was unmonitored. So that's just an update. Thank you for sharing. Alrighty. So the audience will now transition to a couple of votes that we have to do. You're more than welcome to stay or you're more than welcome to leave. Um, but we just have like three more, three things to vote on. So the first one is consideration and action to forego school choice for 2023-2024 school year. Before we do a roll call vote, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Beta to explain what a yes means and what a no means. Okay. And I'm gonna turn it over to our most senior member that is here, because it's always very confusing, to uh, Jeanette. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if any of our school committee members haven't noticed, but we have Anna Hernandez's daughter here. You know, she made that big announcement. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, she's looking at me like, what? <laughs> yeah, hi. <laughs> That's Anna's daughter. Congratulations, Jackie. Yeah, congrats, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> We're just sharing in the joy with your mom. Okay, so. Okay, so the school choice. So a vote, a vote, a yes vote would mean that we are supporting um, Dr. Beta's um, motion to forego school choice. And what is school choice? It is that we open up for other city students to come to Chelsea High. Um, already, we are very packed at the seams, and opening it up for other cities um, would just make things bigger classroom sizes, so we always um, take the recommendation of the superintendent and we just stick to our students here in the city. So a yes vote, we are supporting the superintendent on not opening up our schools to other cities and a no vote is that we're just keeping it to our students here in the city of Chelsea. So to clarify, Ms. Velez, a yes is supporting Dr. Beta's recommendation and a no is you are op you are open, open to, to the idea of opening our doors essentially to other school districts yes. to enter Chelsea. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Any other questions from the school committee before casting a vote? No. Thank you, Ms. Velez. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. All right. Roll call, please. Consideration and action to forego school choice for the 2023-2024 school year. Mr. O'Regan. Yes. Ms. Zabit? Yes. Ms. Cabral? Yes. Ms. Covas Caraballo? Yes. Ms. Garcia? Yes. Mr. Jimenez? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. That's eight in the affirmative and one absent. Motion carries. Next up, we have consideration and action to accept the recommendation of the school superintendent and approve the following line item amounts from the general fund for 2023 2024 school budget, totaling to 1032000 Wow, that's a big number, hold on. <laughs> uh, $132,367,509. Explanation, the annual school budget must be approved by the school committee prior to April 1st of each year, pursuant to the city charter and after a public hearing is held to provide an opportunity to hear public comment on the budget. The school committee has authority to approve budgets under the state law in the city charter. Are there any questions or comments before the vote? Mr. Jimenez? Um, 
So I have a number of questions, so I apologize in advance for um, taking time. Um, so first question uh, is around the related service provider ratios. Um, in particular, you know, the, the students, um, you know, we heard them speak last week um, around, and some of them have uh, uh, signs in favor of uh, additional counselors at the high school. And I know that we got additional information from Dr. Abeda, so I, I just, for the purposes of making sure that students understand that, as well as just kind of my further um, understanding of the issue. So my understanding is there are 250 to one ratios for both school counselors and social workers, right? And part of the information that we got is that there is overlap in the work that these two groups of people do. My question is the fact that there is overlap, what does that mean in terms of the ratios? Does that change, right, in, in, in terms of are these folks able to provide the full services that their position should be providing when there is overlap? And yeah, what is the impact on the ratios? Sure, thank you for the question, I appreciate it. So. Right now, the ratio at Chelsea High School is currently one to 212, and the recommended ratio is one to 250, and that's just with guidance, that's with just the counselors that we have. Um, this does not include the support that our social workers provide, so thus our ratios are actually lower because our social workers provide tier two and three support counseling services to students. And we also have just added Cartwell Telehealth, mental health therapy services district-wide. So we're a district that is well supported with mental health. And I believe what we will work on doing and we already have started is working on our communication to students and how they can access the mental health services that we have because we have a portfolio of mental health services with our guidance counsel with our counselors our social workers and our tele telehealth therapy. And just, a, just a follow up, so the social workers are supporting the counseling work. What does that mean in terms of the social work load um, and the ratios that they have? For yeah, their our social workers, and I'm gonna probably call up Dr. Jennings to the mic because we have total 21 social workers district wide. And is it eight social workers that we have currently at the high school? You can come to the mic, Dr. Jennings. Okay, so we have six total social workers at the high school. So that, that actually reduces the load of the counselors. Got it. Um, okay, and then kind of, sorry. Just no, want to know if no I, need others, to apologize, if, if others, go ahead. If others have questions, oh, please don't apologize. stop yeah, me. Go ahead. Um, so my second question is around the school psychologist um, uh, comments that were brought up last, um, last week. So my understanding based on what they said is that they are really only evaluating, um, and you know, I've heard from, from some folks that the, they would like to also be able to provide services, um, and you know, I kind of I hear folks on wanting to kind of do all the parts of the job that they've been trained for. And correct me if I'm wrong, right? This is just kind of based on my understanding of what they said. And you know, right now we have a position unfilled and somebody's on leave, um, so just it feels to me that this just may be an area for immediate need. And I'm curious if you could Probably. expand a little bit more on why that was not necessarily an area of immediate need. Is it because we have a position already posted that just hasn't been filled, or are there additional considerations yeah. that are in that? Decision? Yeah, we are actually in discussions with that, right, um, and working through that, and I'm actually gonna call Mr. Delady up to, because he's, over, he's overseeing special education right now. Um, we are working with our, our special education administrator to provide and fill those gaps. Got it. And just real quick comment, um, we actually had um, our evaluation this morning uh, at the ELC for my child. Um, so just wanna say we had a you know really good evaluation. So just wanna say thank you to you and the, the team for everything that's going on at the ELC. It's a, you know, we had a really, really amazing experience. Yeah, so the situation with psychologists in the schools, they're not what people typically think of when you think of a psychologist in, in, in the medical field. Mm -hmm. So primarily psychologists in the school setting do psychological testing, writing very detailed reports on what our students need, and they make recommendations, but they're not directly servicing kids and providing psychology services that generally happens through the medical field. 
Is that common across districts? Just because I, I, I've heard from other districts that maybe do additional services in addition to evaluation. I've been in three separate districts, and that's been the case in all three. Okay. Um, I don't know every yeah, district, know but um, in my understanding, that's typically. I actually went to school to be a school psychologist, okay. and I changed my major um, because I wouldn't be working. I knew I wouldn't be working with kids directly, so I changed my major. Got it. Appreciate that. That's helpful. Thank you, Mr. Delady. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Jennings. Dr. Baird, I want to apologize to the school committee. It's we do have eight social workers at the high school complex, so please forgive me. Eight, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Thank Dr. You. Jennings. Um, great. I just have one quick question. Please, I'm going to pause you. I know you sent us a memo regarding a response. What a response to the comments that were mentioned. Um, would you like sure. to, to share the comment? I, I know, especially yeah. about like the security guard yeah. training. Sure. Um, was a large concern. Yeah, so I do want to address, because there was a comment about our security guards. Um, we've been working diligently to fill our security guard vacancies because we do have a couple of vacancies that we, and additions actually, that we added specifically for the bathroom situation. We have hired some security guards, but we still have a few more to hire. Um, but then last week there were um, some comments uh, uh, from students regarding security guards. Um, I have followed up with our security team. Our security guards often have tough jobs because they ensure that students who are what they said straggling in the hallways, they have to say please go to class and they also monitor bathrooms. So at times when correcting student behavior, our students can sometimes resist authority. Um, thus our security guards are doing their jobs and ensuring that our schools are safe and that students are in class learning. Um, in talking though with our team leaders, what we decided and, and based on what we heard is that we could provide some equity training and some de -escalate, more de-escalating training for our security guards. And um, we do believe that this will help the relationship between the security guards and students. So that's something that we are committed to. And then we I know you've already addressed the, asked the question about the mental health. And then um, I do want to address this. There was a request for deans at the middle grades. Um, there, was, there was a request for deans at the middle schools to help with student discipline. Last year, at the request of the principals, we added outreach workers instead of deans to each middle school to help with student discipline. And at the Brown Middle School, we added two outreach workers. So with the cadre of school counselors, social workers, and outreach workers, we do have ample staff to support student discipline and behavior. Um, one thing we're trying to do with this year's budget is we're trying to set the stage for our next fiscal school year. Uh, we have recommended to fund 19 positions from our SR3 grants. These funds will be running out next school year to the general chapter 70 fund. We're doing this because our SR3 grants are slated to run out, un uh, unless this is extended by the federal government. But that said, next year, we are going to have to fund 40 positions. And we're gonna have to put those 40 positions that are already exist where people are already in those positions onto chapter 70, which is our regular general fund. And so we're trying to be cautious about that because we know next year it's gonna be, we're gonna be removing a lot of those positions onto the general fund. Um, so we wanna make sure that we are, we're not cutting posi in a position where we have to cut a lot of positions as well. So that's why we're, we're trying to be as strategic as we can with this budget, but we're also cautious. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Dega. Any additional follow-up questions? Go ahead, Ms. Velez. Uh, I'm the legal counsel from our city solicitor. Um, I was told that I am able to vote on the school budget because we're voting as a whole. If it was something specific just for the high school, then I'm not able to vote, but I am able to vote tonight. Thank you, Ms. Velez. Mr. Jimenez. So, um, actually, sorry, just waiting for the microphone. There we go. Um, so just a quick clarification on what you just said about the dean. So my understanding of the dean's ask from the union members who spoke last week was that they were intended to support teaching and learning. Am I 
Am I missing that? Student discipline, got student it. behavior. So it was basically they would handle that so that other people could deal with the, co the coaching. Got it, got it, okay. Um, all right, so my next kind of separate question. Um, I'm curious, so I saw that the director of culturally responsive curriculum um, was a reduction in the budget this year. Um, that position, I believe we added it last year, and it seems to me a pretty important role, right, that we had added. So um, I, it was interesting to me that it was being reduced. Um, and I'm curious, it's kind of based on looking at the budget, right, it looks like some or all of the work may, may be moving to the equity and excellence coordinator. Um, but I'm just curious what the thought process was on that change, you know, changing it from a director level position to a coordinator position, and then how those roles, you know, are same versus different, and also is there a person currently in that position that would be, whose job would be reduced? Yeah, so we decided to make that change because we noticed that the director of equity was actually in, in culturally responsive teaching was teaming up a lot with Dr. Jennings. And so we were creating the coordinator to go directly under Dr. Jennings as his body of work grows. And so it was either a, de a decision to kind of repurpose that job um, or transfer that person over. but. I, I like to do things clean, so I cut, we've cut, we're cutting that job, repurposing that similar work over to the equity office, and then the person who's currently in that role, we've made it very clear, you can apply to this role, and anybody else that is interested. With the change in title, would that be a reduction of that person? Normally that what we do in a case like that is we keep the person whole. Got it, okay, thank you. Uh, I have a question. Um, so the history and science coaching positions um, were reduced at the, I forgot what school it was, um, maybe the BAM. Um, uh, so I guess first, first part, would like to know if those positions are currently filled, and second, if they are, I'm curious why we're re reducing them, um, kind of the thought process behind that. We had educators here last week that were telling us the importance of these positions, and I see that we're also adding, I think it was a humanities position, that social studies, I forget the name of it, um, I, might, I couldn't find it as I was writing the question. So I'm just curious how that new position overlaps or doesn't, or maybe I'm just misremembering and can't find that position anywhere. Um, just kind of curious about the thought process on that and whether those positions were currently filled. I'm actually gonna call Ms. Lamboy up to answer that question, because it is a little bit complex. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I'm Monica Lamboy, Executive Director of Administration and Finance. Um, with regard to your question, there are two positions, coaches, that are each split across three middle schools. Um, one was a coach for history, and one was a coach for science. The three principals together asked for us to change that structure. They were finding that splitting them across three schools was really making their ability to make an impact very diffuse, they were not able to concentrate and focus um, on one school's needs. And then in addition, there is a, an existing general fund position in the right school, which is a coach for literacy in STEM that has been very successful at that school. So it's teaching how do you do science writing, how do you write within math, um, and so the other two schools that didn't have that, the Brown and the Clark Ave, specifically asked to convert these two coach positions to school-based, so single school, focused on literacy within STEM. So that was with regard to their request. Um, the positions are currently filled, but um, the incumbents are welcome to apply for, for other positions within the district. Okay, so, so it wasn't... I had it wrong. It's like the two positions are basically just converting into school-based positions. Yes. Got it. Okay. Exactly. Helpful. Another question. So I have, um, How just, many to, just to give you a sense, left? I have yeah. five more questions. Um, so how many positions are still unfilled across the district? And kind of are there any particular challenge areas here? And I'm just kind of curious how much of our staffing challenges are hiring challenges versus funding challenges? Regrettably, I don't have the specific numbers, but what I can say, we have the fewest vacancies at this point than we have had all year. 
Um, we have seen quite a bit of movement in terms of paraprofessional positions, social work positions, and teaching positions. So we do have the smallest number of vacancies, um, far smaller compared to where we were in the fall. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is kind of a quick one. Our enrollment projections uh, in the book, it said that it incorporates October 2020 and that that is named as a challenge uh, in the budget book. Um, I'm just curious if we think that it could be off and if there are any repercussions on our enrollment projections being off. The enrollment doesn't change, the projection doesn't change any of the numbers. Okay. It helps us think about space. It helps us think about pressures in different grade levels. You know, as I had mentioned, we have a current large ninth grade and a large eighth grade behind it. Both of those will be at the high school. So it really helps us a lot with space. Um, should we see a significant downturn starting to happen, that will start to influence our ref revenues, but in a year from now. So okay. um, we're in, a, I think, a pretty good place financially. I don't see any impact. And spatially is always a challenge, but we always work it out. All right. Thank you. Um, so this is a question that actually um, I was speaking to some of the students who are here um, earlier today, and you know they were asking about vocational uh, education, um, and I know that you know we, Dr. Vaden has spoken about this, right? Things like space, um, state law preventing us from having overlapping programs. So I'm just curious if you could just elaborate a little bit about what are some of the challenges for doing yeah. that expansion, so that our students can just get a better sense of yeah. Of that. So Botech and something I truly believe in, unfortunately. Years ago, and our city council president is here, but we've been fighting this battle. Uh, years ago, in 1970, I think it was seven cities, over, is it 12 cities got together and said, let's create a MOU and sign an agreement that we would have one VOTEC for all 12 cities. And so that MOU is still in existence to this day. So when there was a vote uh, about a year ago, because that school is really does need so, to be, it's, 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 it's old, and so it needs to be renovated. There was a vote. Our city manager at the time, Mr. Ambrosino, myself, a lot of us here advocated to not support that and because it would cost our uh, citizens and tax and a lot in taxes. Unfortunately, we we're one of the only cities who disagreed with this. And so the building is, the, uh, the renovation of a new building is moving forward. So it's really hard for us to get out of that agreement. Um, what I can say is that we just submitted a application to the Bar Foundation for, to do some work and redesign at Chelsea High School as far as really looking at innovation and ways that we can do more um, hands-on, project-based, engaging learning, rigorous learning. And so if we get that grant, then we can start some exploration. And then that grant opens the door for us to apply for more funding to really solidify our goals, to really solidify some of our pathway programs with more detailed internships. And so we're, hopefully we'll get that funding to really move forward with that work. So we're really wanting to make our pathways really concrete, like really defined and, and more um, project-based and also aligned to what our, our community, our community, our city needs in the future looking at what is what are the projections for jobs in the future in this area and aligning those pathways to that so there's some some things that we're trying to we're going to be doing at chelsea high school and and um, hopefully we can get our students into internships that are like cte but it's going to take some time thank you so much um so two more questions um so kind of I'm curious, what are some of the asks that we got from principals or department heads that we were not able to meet uh, this time around? And just kind of in relation to that, right, we usually get more money from the House and Senate budget, um, and we're basing it off of the governor's budget. So I'm just kind of curious, you know, once we get that additional funding, I guess, do we have different projections because they may be closer due to the next um, governor, uh, the new governor? And then kind of what are some of the priorities for kind of that first 
kind of wave of next money. The best person to answer that is going to be Ms. Lomboy. <laughs> so we received on the order of requests of about 80 positions from the principals. Uh, all sincere, all had reasons why they thought those were good ideas. And every year it's a, it's a tough process to line up the needs and the dollars that are available and, and the ask. So the other types of things um, I think are similar um, in what we've seen in recent years, uh, math specialists, more reading specialists, um, not so much classroom teachers other than at the high school. And then, you know, of course, more ELL positions. One can always, you know, see a need. So I, I, we, we did the best that we could with the resources, and obviously we were adding, adding more, but in a very targeted with the special ed and the ELL. And one thing we do ask our departments to do when they submit their budgets and then when we meet with them is could you please rank these in order What's your preference? And then, so we can, we have that. And so if we do get pothole money, then we can go through that and, and we, we ask them. And, and if we're in doubt, we, act, we call the principals and say, okay, you asked for this, we have this, what do you think? And so we ask them, you know, they, we, they're already right away asked to prioritize. Yeah, I have one last question. Um, the CVLA, um, it is not in the budget book because it's entirely on ESSER. Um, we do have a $10,000 um, increase to the general fund for CVLA, which I think was for like just general expenses. I'm, you know, just thinking ahead to next yeah. year, right? Is, what is the plan for CVLA? Is, does, is it still serving the purpose for which it was brought? Um, and yeah, I'm just, just kind of uh, curious what- I'm so glad you asked that question. Uh, the plan for CVLA and what we're finding is it's a little hidden gem. Um, CVLA, when we first created the school, it was a, in a response to the pandemic to give families an opportunity who were still a little hesitant to, to po possibly send their kids to the virtual learn students to the learning, uh, virtual learning academy. What we've noticed as we've shifted over is that the students who are in CVLA, they, they all have different reasons for being there. Sometimes it's this is just what they want to do. They want to be in a virtual school. Other times it's maybe they, they have some social anxiety. Uh, whatever, the, whatever the case is, it's a case-by-case -case basis that the student applies with the parent to CVLA. We currently have about 70 students in CVLA. And uh, it's, it's, it's growing as far as their way that their, their knowledge to deliver instruction virtually. And the, of the, I mentioned, and we mentioned in the budget book that we had 40 positions that we have to put on the general fund and that will be a priority next year. Okay. I, I have thoughts, but not that is for next cycle. So we will talk later. Um, <laughs> for next you. year? Yeah, no, okay. I, that is not for this year's budget. So I will keep it to myself for now. Um, Thank you. I just want to quickly comment. Thank you for all the work that has gone into this budget. Um, you know, there are a lot of really, really great things in here. The one that really stuck out to me was the La Vida Scholars um, position, which I'm really excited to see on there. I know that, you know, I was part of the folks um, who, who kind of connected. One of our residents was the executive director with um, Dr. Abeda, so I'm really excited how that partnership has started to grow. Um, I'm excited to kind of continue to see the growth in positions. Um, so just want to really thank you and your team for all the work that you've, you've done on getting a good budget together. Um, you know, I, I always have questions, but I appreciate that you always have an answer for me. Um, and also just shout out to the rest of the team for um, also helping to answer all of my questions in full detail. So thank you. Yeah. Just one more comment on the um, La Vida Scholars. It's an amazing program. Um, this last year and one year we sent I believe it was 10 scholars to school, mostly on full rides. Um, La Vida prepares, uh, helps students find colleges that fund them like full scholarships so our students don't have to go into debt. I believe in the program wholeheartedly and I want more of our students to have access to the services that La Vida provides, so thank you. I have a quick follow-up question. I believe La Vida scholars have partnered with us bef many years 
ago. It through in Bursant, and the program is now um, switching over. It's the same funder, it's, it's uh, the same heart, but it's just in a diff, they're switching over. So the students that we have in, Vers in, in Versant will still have access to the funds that they have, but the program is, is shifting a little bit in direction. Okay, I'm like, wait a minute, I think I remember seeing them in the past, so, yeah. So, so in Versant, as I understand it, was a program funded by um, Mr. Hildreth, right? And, and that provided um, funding for students to do, like, planning ahead for college, right? Whereas he created La Vida Scholars out of Lynn, um, probably like six or seven years ago at this point, to, in order to connect uh, students with opportunities at schools where they would be fully funded for college. And so, um, you know, they were thinking about where to expand to, and so that's how we ended up connecting about Chelsea. So. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been going on in Lynn for a number of, of years prior to, yeah. to coming to Chelsea. Great, yeah. awesome. Um, team, before voting, I, I'd like to piggy off of Mr. Jimenez's um, appreciation note. This budget reflects every single one of us that are in here, but most, most importantly, it, it includes student voice, teacher voice, um, administrative voice, and um, and I just want to, to really express my gratitude to this team who continues to show up day in and day out and is thinking through and listening uh, to our families, to our students, to our staff. What is missing? What are the gaps? How can we fill those gaps? How can we support our families? And so I just, you know, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to every single member here who's watching at home, who sends us emails, who shows up to input meetings. Um, it is a budget that is created out of love, out of passion, out of dedication, and out of equity. And so thank you so much to everyone here um, for your contribution. With that, Veronica, roll call, please. Consideration and action to accept the recommendation of the school superintendent and approve the following line item amounts from the general fund for the 2023-2024 school budget totaling 132 million three hundred sixty-seven. $1,509. Mr. O'Regan? Mr. O'Regan? Yes. Ms. Zabit? Yes. Ms. Cabral? Yes. Ms. Covas Caraballo? Yes. Ms. Garcia? Yes. Mr. Jimenez? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. Let's see, in the affirmative and one absent. The motion passes. That's it for the votes. There are a few uh, announcements I'd like to share out. On April 5th, next week, we are hosting our annual Easter basket distribution. Miss Lee, shout out to you. You always donate a ton of baskets. In fact, right before this meeting, she was there at the pantry donating baskets, so thank you so much. Thank you to those who sent Venmo um, donations, who uh, are there in, in the assembly line over in Linfield if you're watching at home. Thank you so much. Our, our families are going to be so excited. And so if you're free, join us at La Colaborativa over um, on 63rd Street, 60, I'm sorry, 66th Street, um, where we will be distributing food and Easter baskets April 5th from 2 to 6 p.m. Um, and then our last one is Miss Cobas Caravaggio's birthday today. So I'd love for us to sing happy birthday if we can. Never mind. Feliz cumpleaños. No singing, but we wish you a happy birthday. <laughs> yes. Okay. Go ahead. Just um, bring your mic closer. So, yes. So, from my birthday, which is life, right? I would like to take a moment, as usual, because I'm, you know, so unfortunately morbid sometimes. But I would like to highlight the importance of sometimes, you know, when we when we talk about, um, you know, situations when we listen to um, just the students when when they bring up situations with like security and I'd like to just think from all angles right because it's it's hard to sit up here knowing that I was once your age believe it or not 
Um, I'm a mother now, um, and these people have work to do. So we all have to kind of like walk in each other's shoes and knowing that academically speaking, then they also had to fulfill tasks within that role. So I just wanna highlight the work that our educators do. Um, when they come to work, they're prepared to educate, right? Security guards ask for us to be where we're supposed to be because in the event that something unfortunate happens, we all have to play our roles. So us doing that facilitates certain things. So I really like to, to just consider that in some cases, you know, if, if nothing else. Um, so I do think, you know, which I know that the school system, I mean, I'm so thankful for the communication level that we have as a district, uh, as, you know, with the police department, our, our teachers, our faculty, our staff, because when we leave in the morning to fulfill our jobs, we leave thinking that we're going to be doing our jobs. And in some cases, people do their work and then some. And then that and then some is probably more than some families are willing to pay. So I am deeply, you know, I'm, as students, I, I get that you guys have that uncertainty. I know that some of the drills that we have to talk about, that we have to have you guys go through are uncomfortable. Trust me, as a mother, it, it, it burns my soul every time I have to think that, you know, my child is going through that, that the educators have to take time away from their day to teach those. But it calms, it calms me knowing that when that time comes, should something like that happen, everyone has their, knows their role and knows how to execute it. Because it, when it's fight or flight time, it's that important. So I know it's, times are uncertain, but it's really, really, really important. You know, especially on the high school level. Because I know that that age group from middle school to high school, it's so uncertain. So I, I really, really commend our staff. I am, you know, my heart goes out to those families that had to go through those situations no matter where, you know, their beliefs lied. And I see your signs, I read them, and I, I, I feel them, you know. So thank you for being here, and I appreciate all of you guys. And I mean that. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or announcements? Mr. Jimenez? Um, I would just like to, I know that we have seen increasing numbers of Muslim students in our student body, and I would like to wish them all a blessed Ramadan, um, Ramadan Kareem, to all of our students who are fasting and hopefully have broken the fast by now for today. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned at 7.55. Have a great evening, everyone. Well, no, good night, everyone.